Well, before I get into the message and really as part of the message, you know, we're doing this fishing theme. And as Amanda said earlier, that uh, our fishing theme is coming to an end. We've been doing this theme called Gone Fishing. And it's really to remind us that we are to be fishers of men. Well, as part of this, I really wanted to try several different ways to help us get this, this truth, this really command from Jesus down into the depths of our hearts. And so one of the ways that we have done that, other than decorating the sanctuary, is to have a fishing challenge. Now, we're going to talk about the fishing challenge. You can go ahead and pull that, uh, just that title slide up if you'd like to. So our fishing challenge, we had that not uh, yesterday, uh, not last, not this past Saturday, but last, I'm going to call that last Saturday. And uh, so we had a, a good time and we had some participants and everything. And those of you who didn't participate, boo on you. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, we had a good time. If uh, you didn't have an opportunity to, uh, to go out and to fish and to be part of the competition, uh, we had a really good time. So we have a few pictures to show you and uh, of our great fishing experience. So here's one of Mary Kay. And so if you can see that, she caught a little uh, pan fish. And uh, let me tell you, uh, as good a job as we have been doing, I mean, we were excited to get that little pan fish about the size of the palm of your hand. Okay, and then the next one, uh, that's where she measured it. And so, uh, and she, did you notice how she measured? Did you notice this? I, sweetheart, I hope you're watching today. But she started here at the one inch line, so it would look bigger. You guys notice that? That, that? that is a fisherman at heart right there, isn't it? Always like, oh, it was this big. So, yeah. Uh, and then go ahead and the next one. Here's, here's my little panfish. It was ginormous. I mean, you could tell, right? And, uh, oh, well, maybe it wasn't that big. And uh, so that's where I was measuring it. We really didn't have to measure those, but we were just trying to get into the groove of like, okay, how are we going to measure these fish? That's a perch that uh, Mary Kay caught. And uh, there she's measuring it, and it was uh, about seven inches long. I think she's doing a little better job there. And then there's my perch that I caught. I didn't uh, measure it. And, uh, oh. and then there's somebody else's perch. And uh, that one is uh, right at 10 inches long. So that's a nice size perch. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to whose that was in just a minute. Go ahead. And then uh, next, uh, so this is all the perch that Terry, George, Melissa, and is it Matiana? Did I get that right? Matiana. So this is kind of their mess of fish. Do you guys call them a mess of fish up here? We call them a mess of fish? Or is that, you, Terry's saying yes. Okay. Some of you are like, I don't know. I just go to, you know, Neiman's and get my fish or whatever. So, <clears throat> and then there's no mess. Okay. So that was kind of their mess of fish uh, during the fishing challenge. And so they did a good job. And you just caught one species, right? right. Perch was everything? Okay. All right. Good. All right. So just want to make sure. Okay. And then next, I uh, have Tom Blake. And so here's his 13-inch smallmouth bass, which isn't big enough to keep. I hope you put that back, Tom. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then, uh, and then he caught a seven-inch uh, bluegill. You guys are able to see okay over there, and a uh, seven-inch bluegill. And uh, then he caught a nine-inch uh, rock bass. So that's a good-sized rock bass. And uh, so, and then what else did Tom catch? Uh, oh yeah, honorable mention. And Dan's not here today. Uh, but he caught this 17-inch smallmouth bass, and he caught it 10 minutes too late. There's somebody here who's, who's excited that that, that, that happened, uh, uh, and we'll find out who that is in just a minute. But yeah, so he caught this 17-inch uh, smallmouth bass, but it was 10 minutes too late. Therefore, he just gets an honorable mention. So yeah. And then next we have... Uh, oh, yeah. So here's our first winner, and so this is Matiana. And so in the category of 16 and under... She caught the largest fish, and it is a perch, and it looks like it's about seven and a half. Is that about right? Yep. That, that that what you guys come up with? I should have put the size on there, and I didn't. So, Matiana, if you'll go ahead and come on up. We have... <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for participating. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Next... Who do we have? Oh, we have George, who had the largest perch, and so we got it at nine and three quarter, is what they said. So, George, if you'll go ahead and come on up. By the way, George is a George is a great friend of uh, the church and our men's ministry. Thank you, George. Appreciate that uh, very much. And uh, 
Uh, ten and a half, yeah. Are you measuring it the way Mary Kay measured? Is that, is that what's happening there? Okay, all right, so yeah. Okay, and then next, who do we have? Oh yeah, we have uh, T- Tom, who won with the largest pike, 24 and a quarter inches, and so uh, just stay right there for a minute, Tom. And then, uh, and then our next winner was Tom, who also, who also caught uh, the largest bass, a 15 and a quarter inch smallmouth bass, which he, he did get to keep. So uh, I was kidding him about the 13. And I think that's it, right? Is that, that, that's all the slides we have, right? Yeah. Do we have any more? Okay, all right. So come on up, Tom. Get your two. So Tom won two of these. So Tom, I appreciate your participating. Thank you very much. And uh, enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, enjoy that. So um, we... Uh, Tom... Tom was quite the, quite the fisherman, caught the largest pike and the largest bass. And uh, so I pretty much hate him right now. <laughs> I'm, pr- I'm, try- I'm, try- I'm, try- I'm trying to pray through, Tom. What can I, what, what can I say? Uh, you saw the fish I caught, you know, the size of the palm in your hand. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if we're going to do this next year. I don't know if I'm going to take defeat that well, Xander. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we had a really good time uh, with that. What's that? Yeah, ice fishing. Yeah, I don't know. Can I? Can I? Can I do that from my house? Uh, so yeah, yeah. So you could do it from your house probably. Yeah, because uh, you live out there on the lake. But anyway, uh, yeah. So uh, so anyway, uh, all of that has been done, and we wanted to have some fun, but we wanted to drive home this truth that Jesus said to us, that he gave this command, that if you follow me, you will be fishers of men or fishers of people. That we have a responsibility to share the gospel. And so today we are concluding this series, and uh, uh, some of you are probably glad, like I don't care if I ever hear another fish story again. <laughs> but uh, it, has been, it has been good. And so we're concluding this series because... Um, it's time to move on, but this series has really, as I said, reminded us that we are to bring people into the kingdom of God. And as a church, we need that reminder, don't we? That we have an assignment, that we have a mission, that we need to be a fisher of people. And we need to be a fisher of people more than we need to be keepers of the aquarium. And sometimes if we're not careful, we'll end up just trying to maintain what we have rather than going out and winning the lost and sharing the gospel. You know, there are people in Alpena and the surrounding communities that need to know about Jesus, right? They need to know about Jesus. And that's our responsibility to do that. There are people who don't know who don't know that they're lost. There are people who are confused, who they don't know that God loves them. And so as a church, we are responsible to share the good news. You see, we need to remember that we were lost, but now we've been found. See, that's really the essence of what we're talking about. You see, when when we share the good news of Christ, we are being fishers of people. Now, last Saturday, as a result of what you saw on those pictures, uh, we had, uh, you know, that first assembly challenge. And so as a result of that, Mary Kay and I caught the perch and we caught some panfish. And then Dan Cotter gave us that 17-inch bass. And so we took them all home to practice our cleaning. (laughs) And I say practice. I mean, we actually did it. It's not like we didn't do anything with them. I mean, we actually cleaned the fish, but I say practice because we haven't done a lot of it. Now, Mary Kay and I went up in June to Jim Benson's house, and so there was some pike caught, not by me, <laughs> but uh, there was some pike caught by Jim, and Mary Kay caught one, and so Jim said, okay, I'm going to show you how to clean a pike, and to clean it and not have any bones in it, and so we're standing around, we're watching, and Mary Kay takes out her camera, and she starts videoing the process. And so after she videos the process, he said, there's your fish. There's your pike that you caught. Put it up here. You're going to clean it. So now it's not only watch me, it's now you do. So she gets up and she cleans her fish. And so we bring everything home and then we ate it later. Well, we hadn't caught a whole lot of fish, but a couple of weeks ago we were fishing down at the river and we caught some catfish. And so we 
come home, we watched some YouTube videos on how to clean the catfish, and so we filleted those, and we ate those, and I caught another bass that was legal, which is hard for me to do, but I caught another bass that was legal, and I cleaned that, and so we had kind of had a few experiences, but not a lot. And then last Saturday, so we kept our panfish, we kept our perch, everything that was legal for us to catch, we kept the 17-inch bass, we took it home, and away we went to filleting and to cleaning the fish. You know, uh, I might have, I think, uh, let's show uh, that fish that uh, Dan gave us. Is that what's coming up next? Yeah, and so that's the fish, that's the 17 inch fish that Dan Cotter gave us and that he gave us. Okay, let's go to the next picture. And so that next picture is, there it is. So there's a, that's us starting to fillet. Uh, you know, I don't know how much that might bother you. It won't be up there for, for just a second. But uh, this is us filleting it and then the actual fillet that we got off the fish. Right there, there we go. So it's right there. And so we have those pictures uh, because we want you to understand that when you clean a fish, you're gonna get dirty. Now I don't mean like you're gonna get filthy dirty. I just mean that you're going to need to clean up when you're finished <laughs> cleaning fish. Now why do I tell you those fish cleaning stories? Well, because Jesus said that he would make us fisher of people. And sometimes the church forget that the fish that they catch need to be cleaned. So let me say it this way. When we fish for people, we need to make sure that people get cleaned up. They get sanctified, that they are set apart, that they are set apart for God and that they become holy. Now when I say clean, I'm not talking about that we're going to cut people open and we're going to fillet their skin, okay? That's not, that's not what we're talking about doing here, okay? I'm really talking about two things. I'm talking about getting the sin out of their lives and that's often a challenging process. And it's just as messy as cleaning fish. So how do fish, how do people get cleaned? Well, it's a multi-layered process. We're cleaned by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, and by the Church of God, or, or the people of God. It's a messy process. And we need to prepare ourselves to get dirty and clean the fish. And the second thing that I'm talking about is preparing ourselves to clean fish or to clean people preparing them to become part of the body of Christ. Now listen, when we clean fish, whether it's perch or bass or walleye or pike or whatever it is, it's so that they can be consumed to benefit our human body, right? That's why we clean them. We clean them so that they can be consumed. And great care is taken to make sure that all the bones are removed so that we don't choke, <laughs> so that we don't get hurt, right? In a similar manner, in a similar manner, people are clean so that they don't choke or hurt the body of Christ. We must be mindful of this truth. When we clean fish, we're going to get dirty. We need to be prepared to get dirty. So this morning, I want you to understand that fish are slimy and they're bloody and there's usually fish guts to contend with. And sometimes those fish will attract things, and we just learned this last Saturday, yellow jackets as well as flies. We had those fish out, we are cleaning them, and all of a sudden the yellow jackets coming around, and uh, they wanted to share the fish with us, <laughs> and we didn't want to share. So this morning there are three factors that we need to consider when cleaning fish. The first factor is this, keep it. Am I going to keep it? I want you to listen to Luke chapter 14, verse 23. The master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Now Jesus is telling this as part of a parable of a great wedding banquet. And I want you to notice two important things that he said in this parable in verse 23. He said, first of all, compel them. The second thing that he said to them, he said, so that my house will be full. Did you know that God wants his house to be full? God wants heaven to be full. He wants his churches to be full. He wants us to compel or to urge people to come to his place. His place is his church. His place is heaven. Remember this. The church belongs to Jesus. 
And he wants his church to be full. He wants his church to be full of fish, to be full of people, if you will. So our responsibility is to compel them. To compel them means to urge them. He wants us to keep all the fish that we catch. Are you hearing me? He wants us to keep all the fish that we catch. You see, we see the value that Jesus puts on people in Matthew chapter 18, verse 12. It says, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go look for that one that wandered off? Now listen, throughout the Bible, Jesus uses all types of metaphors to help people understand how important people are to him. He starts off by saying, I want you to be fishers of men. But in this verse, he's talking about sheep. He's talking about how if one sheep wanders away, the shepherd is going to go look for it. He wants all of his house full. He wants to keep every fish. He values every person. He values every fish. And we need to understand something about keeping fish. Are you ready for this? This is profound. Keeping it begins before you catch it. <laughs> keeping it begins before you catch it. You're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, there are some people who like to do catch and release. So catch and release is you catch a fish and you let it go. You put it back in the water and you let it go. You maybe take a picture with it and you let it go. You, that's all there is to it. There are people who like to do catch and release. They like the fun. They like to pull of the tug of the line. They like the hunt. They enjoy going out and, and doing catch and release when they're just fishing for fish. And then there are people like me. They're like, I want to keep them all. If they're legal. Okay, for those of you who are sticklers. <laughs> if they're legal, okay. I want to, I, I make that determination that I'm going to catch every fish I'm going to catch. I'm going to keep it and I am going to take it home and I'm going to clean it. Now listen, there's a huge difference between catch and release and keeping the fish. There is a commitment that is involved that is involved when you are going to keep the fish. There is a, a time investment involved. Listen, people who catch and release and they, they get finished, they, take, they go home and they get out and they take their boats and they park their boats and they go in the house and they're finished. Because they caught their fish, they release them to the lake, they don't have any fish to clean. They don't have an investment. But when I get home, not only do I have to put my boat away, I have to go get my table, I have to go get my fillet knife, I have to make sure my fillet knife is sharp, I have to clean the fish, I have to deal with the blood and the guts, don't want to be gross but I'm just trying to be honest <laughs> with you, there's a process involved in cleaning the fish, there is a commitment, and so before I ever go fishing, I have made up my mind, I am committed to keeping every fish that's legal that I can keep. <laughs> The church needs that same kind of commitment. That's right. That every person that they catch, that they are going to keep that person. They're going to make that same kind of commitment. When I'm filleting fish, I, I have to get my water hose out and I have to make sure that my knife constantly stays sharp. You see, I'm making a commitment to them. And listen, I'm not only making a, a commitment to the fish, I'm making a commitment to get dirty. <laughs> I'm making a commitment that when I reach down in there and I grab that fish and I pull it out of the bucket and I lay it on a mat that I use to, to clean the fish with, I'm making a commitment to keep all that clean and keep all that up to date and, and to be prepared because when I do catch a fish, which those of you who've been around know that doesn't happen very often, <clears throat> when I do catch a fish, I'm going to keep it. I, I want to be ready and I want to be prepared. When you, when you catch a fish and you're going you're to clean it, you're going to get some slime on you. You might, you might catch some, some, some fish scales on you. Listen, when we, when we go out and we fish for people, we need to be prepared to say, you know what, I'm not going to walk away from this without having some slime on me. 
You see, there's, there's too many people, there's too many churches that think, you know what we need to do? We just need clean sinners up in here. <laughs> we, we, we don't need any sinners that's got problems in their lives. We don't need any sinners that have issues and have to work through years and years of bad decisions. We don't, we don't need any of those kind of people. We, we just want clean sinners up in here. We don't want to get our hands dirty. We don't want to commit to helping people get the junk out of their lives. We just, want to, we just want to have clean people in here. People that aren't too bad. But Jesus tells us that we need to go catch the fish. That we need to not only catch them. Listen, there's a process involved. We, we've got to clean the fish. And the first thing we have to decide is that we are going to keep the fish. Some people don't want that commitment. Sad thing is, is sometimes true of many churches. There are folks who don't want to get dirty. They don't want to smell. They don't want to mess. They, they just want their fish already clean. Let me ask you this morning, are you committed to not only reaching the lost, but keeping the lost? Are you committed to going fishing for people? Are you committed to getting dirty? Are you committed to keeping the fish that you catch? Are you committed to cleaning the fish? Let me ask it this way. Are you committed to helping people grow in their relationship with Christ? You see, that's really what we're talking about today. Helping people get cleaned up. Helping people get the sin out of their lives. So the first factor that we need to consider today is keep it. But the second factor is equally important and maybe shocking. And that is you've got to kill it. <laughs> How do you like that one? You got to kill it. Come on now. <laughs> That's good. Maybe you don't realize it yet. Do you get the correlation? <laughs> do, you, do you get the connection? You cannot clean a fish and expect it to live. That's good. Okay, it's not good yet. <laughs> You have to be committed to killing the fish. The fish doesn't want to die. It wants to live. Are you getting it yet? Are you with me yet? Here, let me help you make this plain. This is about discipleship. To be a disciple of Jesus, we have to lay down our old lives and our old ways. To make a disciple of Jesus, to fish for people, is to help those people become followers of Jesus. And to do that, you know what they got to do? They got to lay down their old life. They've got to give up their old life. Their old life has to die. It has to die. That's what scripture teaches us. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. He said, then he said to them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Let me pause here. When he says to take up cross daily, he's not talking about some figurative thing. In his time, that meant take up your cross. It was a real thing. It wasn't something that adorned a church wall. It was a real instrument of death where people died. And to follow him meant that you would likely die in reality to really die. But it also means to give up your old life. Verse 24, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will save it. Every fish, every person, every disciple needs to understand what this verse means. The Apostle Paul said something similar to this in Romans chapter 6, verses 5 through 7, and then also in verse 11. He said this, For if we have been united with him in his death, like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Verse 6. For we know, listen to this, that our old self was crucified with him. That's the old life dying. So that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. So that we should no longer be slaves sin. 
Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. In the same way, listen to this, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Listen, if you're going to catch a fish, you're going to clean it, you've got to determine to keep it, and you've got to determine to kill it. When we're talking about making disciples of people, we not only have to go get them, we not only have to fish for people, we have to determine to help them realize they have to be dead to sin. They have to give up their old life in the same way that a fish has to give up its life. The more we lose our life for Christ, the less temptation that we have to sin. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but a dead fish is not tempted by fate. <laughs> let's, uh, let's show that next picture. A dead fish is not tempted by sin. This fish is dead. It's not breathing. You can take a worm, put it right down there in front of its mouth, and you know what it's going to do? Nothing. You can, you can take a minnow and put it in front of it. You can throw all kinds of lures at it. But this fish is not tempted by sin. And the Bible reminds us that when we are dead to our old lives, that when we decide and determine to follow Christ, that we are crucified with Him, we leave the old life behind, and that we should no longer be tempted by sin. A dead fish is not tempted by sin. As we disciple people, we help them to grow in maturity, to be sanctified, to be holy, to be set apart, to be dead in sin. And the longer we live for Jesus, the less that we are tempted to sin. Are you hearing me today? You see, the desire to sin should diminish. It should go away. Now let me tell you, when you first start cleaning a fish, if that fish is alive, some of those that we brought home a couple of weeks ago were still alive. And when we started cleaning them, they were hanging on to life with everything. They were flipping and flopping around. They were, they, they were not enjoying the process. It's like a lot of people in the church, isn't it? Yeah. You see, that, that fish, it didn't want to give up its life. And there are people in the church the same way. They fight for their rights. They fight for the control of their lives. They fight for control of their decisions. They fight over the control of their finances. What do you mean, give to God? I'm not going to do that. These are my dollars. I earn them. I own them. These are my hopes. These are my dreams. You see them fighting in their lives. You see them fight in their marriages. You see them fight with their employers. They fight with people they don't know. They fight with other people in the church. They fight with all sorts of authority. Now listen, <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. <laughs> <clears throat> I can list names of people who used to attend this church that they don't attend anymore. <clears throat> Why is that? It's because they didn't give up their old life. They didn't give up their old life. They didn't die. <clears throat> so they were not clean. If you're going to clean fish, you're going to have to kill it. These people, they wanted a relationship with a person more than they wanted a relationship with God. There are people who have attended churches, including this one, who, who wanted to have their pet sins, their addictions, or their relationships more than they wanted Christ. There are people who have been baptized. And let me tell you, baptism is this powerful, powerful image of the old you being buried and a new you being raised to new life. There are people who have been baptized, who have made a profession of faith, who have said that they were going to follow Jesus. People who have said that the old them had died and that they were raised to a new life in Christ. But guess what? They didn't die. <laughs> they were just on life support, I guess. <laughs> Their old life made a full recovery. Their old life fought hard and they didn't die. But listen to me carefully. If there's anything or anyone that God is asking you to give up, you must give it up regardless of how significant it is to someone else. You see, sometimes God ask, might ask me to give something up that is big to me, but it's not big to you. And if there's anything in our lives that we're unwilling to give up, then we're not really dead yet. We have to get to that place where we let our old life die. We give up our old life. 
See, we need to realize that we can die in our trans, uh, trespasses and sins, or we can die to the world. We can live in Christ and for Christ, but if we're going to live in Christ and for Christ, to do that, we've got to die. We can live for ourselves, or we can live for the pleasures of this world, but we can't live for Christ and for ourselves or the pleasures of this world. I want to remind you this morning that if you're going to clean a fish, you got to kill it. Each of us are fishers of people, so we must ourselves be ready to die, die to sin, die to our old lives, our old ways, and to help those people that we lead to Jesus, to help them to be ready to die as well. Remember this, a dead fish is not tempted by bait. By bait. And finally, the third thing that we must consider, the third factor, I said we must keep it, we must kill it, and the third thing is you must consume it. The purpose of fishing is to eat what you catch. That's pretty profound. Now, if you're a catch and release person, that's not you. But if you're going to catch it, you're going to eat it. So think about this for just a moment. Think about Jesus for a moment. He told the disciples as well as us that we're to be fishers of men, fishers of people. Now, I understand that every analogy breaks down at some point, so we must ask ourselves, if people are like fish, are we supposed to eat them? <laughs> no. Of course not. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do? Is this where the analogy ends? Catching, feed, uh, catching fish, keeping fish, killing fish, cleaning fish? Is that where... There is, is that where the analogy ends? I think we can add consume it, and here's why. Let me ask you this question. As a matter of fact, I gave you the answer a little bit earlier. But what happens when you eat a fish? It goes into your body and it strengthens you. When you eat fish, it makes you healthier and stronger and it gives you energy to do your work. Well, in a similar way, when we fish for people, we catch them. We keep them. We teach them. We teach them that they must die to sin and to self. You see, that's all part of the process. I got my notes out of order. I'm almost finished. But you see, that's not the final step. The final step with fishing is we eat the fish. We commit ourselves to getting dirty, to cleaning the fish. So that the fish can become part of our human body. The fish is consumed. The bad stuff for the body is thrown away. The good stuff is consumed. Now check this out. If we, if we don't do a good job cleaning the fish, guess what? We could be injured. If we don't get the bones out, we can be choked. And potentially, we could die. If we get a bone caught in our throat, our human body feels pain. Now let me tell you, the same, the, the, the same thing is true in the church, isn't it? What does the Bible teach us? That we are the body of Christ. We are. Here's what Romans chapter 12 verses 3 through 5 says. It says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Let me just tell you, that's a bone right there. Have you met people in the church who think of themselves way too highly? And Paul is just writing a little, it's a bone right here that's going to hurt the church. Look, if you have a fish, if you have a person in the church who thinks of themselves more highly, that's a bone, that's danger to the church. And Paul says, listen, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance to the faith that God has distributed to each of you. Verse 4, for just as each of us has one body with, member, with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, what does he say, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You see, we need to do a good job of discipling others, teaching them and modeling for them what it means to follow Christ. We need to teach them humility. We need to teach them to, how to be fishers of people. We need to teach each person in the body of Christ that we want to keep all the fish that we catch, that we want to keep all the people that we share Christ with. We don't want to release any of them. 
We need to model for them how to live sanctified and holy lives. We need to model for them how to love one another and how to encourage one another. We need to model for new believers how to deal with conflict in the church according to Matthew chapter 18. You see, that's a, that's a bone in the fish. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes there's conflict with people in the church and that can cause pain and that can cause injury in the church. But if we do a good job with discipleship and we are bringing people into the body of Christ, then that's not a bone that's going to hurt. But if we don't teach them, listen, we've got to learn a healthy way to deal with conflict. We've got to deal with conflict the right way, a biblical way, a scriptural way. We've got to work through it. Otherwise, it's a bone that could get caught in the body and hurt the body. You see, ultimately, when we eat a fish, it becomes part of our human body. When we catch someone and we bring them in, we bring them into the body of Christ. We bring them into the body of Christ. They become a part of us. <laughs> and if we don't do a good job in discipleship, if we don't do a good job in helping them get the sin out of their lives, if we don't do a good job in helping them grow in their relationship with God, if we don't listen to this, if we don't do a good job of allowing them to be consumed by God, and be consumed by the things of God, then they're going to bring hurt to the body of Christ. They're going to bring pain to the body of Christ. Why? Because they are going after other things that God says no to. And that hurts the body of Christ. We need to teach people how to lose their old life of sin. We need to teach them how to overcome temptations. The bait of Satan, the bait of the world, the bait of pleasures. Why is it important? Because they are becoming a part of the body of Christ. Just as fish are consumed, they are eaten, and they become beneficial to the human body. Followers of Jesus are consumed with the things of God, and they become beneficial to the body of Christ. So let's make it personal. The more you, the more you become consumed by the things of God, the more beneficial you will become to the body of Christ. Now let me ask you, are you fishing for people? Are you determined to keep what you catch? Are you determined to disciple those that you catch, helping them to die to their old life? Are you dying to your old life? Are you willing to be consumed by the things of God? And finally, are you beneficial? Are you helpful? Are you good for the body of Christ? Let me ask you to stand if you would, please. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to respond to the message. I'm going to ask you if you would, please, to bow your heads, to close your eyes, with no one looking around. Perhaps this morning you would... Say, Pastor, I need to give my life to Christ. That's always the first step. If that's you, would you just raise your hand while we wait for just a moment? You could say, Pastor, I need to give my life to Christ. If that's you. Perhaps today, you would say, Pastor, maybe I've been on the catch and release. I, I've really not made a commitment to keep the people that I'm witnessing to. And you'd say, Pastor, I'd like prayer. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I want to pray for you. Perhaps today you would say, Pastor, I'm struggling with the whole dying thing, dying to my old sin, dying to my old ways. I'm tempted regularly, and I would like prayer. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Thank you. Perhaps today you would say, Pastor, I need to be more beneficial to the body of Christ so that I can teach others how to be more beneficial. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Thank you. Father, today we thank you for every hand that's been raised, for every heart that's been touched. And God, we ask that you would do an amazing work in their lives. Father, as we come to the end of this series, may we not come to an end of being fishers of people. Lord, of sharing our faith, of reaching out to people, helping them to grow in their relationship with you. Lord, that we would become all, that every church would become all that 
you call every church to become. Lord, that you would help us as individuals to be what you want us to become. Now, Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. You are dismissed. Go in the grace of the Lord.